It's about that leader's life and words and mission. How does that leader, how does that founder's life and words and mission? Jesus was the only one who even claimed to be God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. I'm sorry. You know what Jesus said? You talk about a gateway to heaven. You know what Jesus said? I'm the gate. He said, all who came before me were robbers and thieves like Nimrod. It was bricks. It was slime. It was a man-made gateway for self-preservation to preserve culture because you have to add God to the equation. And that's what a lot of religion is. It's man-made things adding God to equation to promote their own political system, social system, nation, economic, and I'll say this too for, first of all, let me say this. Followers of Jesus are not Western. Our faith was not birthed in America. It was birthed in Jerusalem. You, you, you think America has a lot of followers of Jesus? You need to wake up. Did you know that there's a church in Korea? You might've heard of him, pastor by Dr. Youngie Cho. It's got like 1.3 million people that attend the church. That would be like the entire city of Jacksonville going to one church. Did you know in China, there's estimated 150 million underground, fired up, born again, spirit-filled believers? They say in 10 years it could hit 300 million. There will be more born-again, spirit-filled believers in the country of China than the entire population of the United States. You talk about, about followers of Jesus, how about right there where we're talking about? Iraq, Iran. All you see on the news is, you know, the Iranian president and all that kind of stuff he's saying. You know where there is a massive move of God going on in Tehran. Those college kids are fired up for Jesus. It's everywhere, man. You know why? Because followers of Jesus... And our faith in Jesus Christ, it is not man-made, it is God-birthed. And Jesus said, I will build my church. It will not be of this world. It will not be an earthly kingdom. It will be a heavenly kingdom. It will be otherworldly. You can't stop God. It is unstoppable. You can't stop the church. So where do all these religions come from? You can make one up yourself. <laughs> Why don't you just make up, maybe your name's uh, Marmaduke. <laughs> Here's a good one. Why don't, let's just say that all religions of the world are some type of pathway to God. And, uh, you know, everybody be at peace. And uh, whatever, that, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Everybody be at peace. Um, all religions, and everybody goes to heaven, right? Eventually. That sounds good. And we'll just call that Marmadukeism. <laughs> I don't care there's a billion followers of Marmadukeism. If Marmaduke's wrong, the billion followers are wrong. I don't care how many followers there are of how many different religions. If the founder is wrong, all the rest are wrong. What did Jesus, what did Jesus tell the Pharisees? He says, you guys, you, you read the gospels. The greatest enemy of Jesus was religion. You know what Jesus told the Pharisees, the ones that he was in conflict with, not Pharisees overall. There were a lot of Pharisees that were very well-meaning and, and a, lot, a lot of them ended up becoming followers of Christ. Jesus says, man, you guys travel over land and sea to make one convert. 
In, in other words, he's saying you're passionate about making converts. You will, will, will be willing to do anything to make a convert. He says, but when you do, you make him twice the son of hell as you are yourself. I'm sorry. Jesus said that. My intent is not to offend anyone today. But I'll tell you what, nobody is speaking up and at least bringing Jesus into the picture with what's going on in the world today. So at this time, we see the fruit of man-made religion. So where did all the religions of the earth come from? They learned it right here, right here in Genesis 11. This is the founder of false religion, Nimrod. So what happens was the fruit of man-made false religion, self-preservation, the gateway to God was actually renamed confusion. And all man-made gateways to God eventually bring confusion, which eventually brings strife, which eventually bring war, which there are currently 28 religious wars going on. So what happened was, all the people, when the language was confused, they all got confused in all these different nations and tribes. Guess what? They took what they learned from Nimrod. They went to their own place with their own language that they could understand and said, look, we better have our own gateway to God and we better protect our way of life. And we better do what they, I mean, I know it got dispersed over there, but we better take it. Remember how Nimrod does? He was a conqueror. He was a mighty one in the earth. He had it going on. If we want it going on, we need to find our God to preserve our way of life. Just, just hence every different tribe and all these different things. And what it ended up doing, see, here's the thing. God created human beings for worship and trust. So what Satan does is he takes advantage of our natural desire to find and know God but he twists it with the sinful, selfish human desires that we all have before we come to Jesus. But here's the good news. You wanna know the good news? Some of you are like, is there any good news to this message? <laughs> no, bow your heads, there's none. No, I'm Watch this, here's the good news. Jesus loves all the people of the world. When Jesus looks down, he doesn't see different religions, he just sees people. People can believe in whatever. People are atheists. People can follow whatever. When Jesus looks down, he sees individuals and he sees people that he loves. And he sent the Holy Spirit. And guess what the Holy Spirit is doing in every person all throughout the world right now? He is, as it says in John 16, he is convincing them and convicting them of their need of Jesus that Jesus loves them and that Jesus is who they are really looking for. He's not convincing them of Christianity. Christianity is the name that Christians have given themselves. Some Christianity is true, some Christianity is false. He's convincing them to surrender their lives to him so that they can have a relationship with God and be a follower of Jesus. I don't care if people call me a Christian or not. With some Christian circles, I don't even want to be associated with them. You know what I want to be known as? A follower of Jesus. I am a follower of Jesus, and I have a relationship with God. That Jesus is the gate. Here's the good news. There is a gateway to heaven, but it's not built with bricks. It's built with our living stone, Jesus Christ. And he died for your sins and he rose again from the grave and he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. You want to know what the day of Pentecost was? It was the opposite of the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel, what? Man went up. Man tried to ascend himself. Man made. What happened on the day of Pentecost? God came down. God says, look, you, God says, what are you guys doing? You can't ascend up to me. You need help. I love you. I'm going to come down to you. What happened at Babel? 
All the earthly languages came and caused confusion. On the day of Pentecost, just the opposite happened. 